How's everybody doing today? You excited for tomorrow? In just a couple minutes, we're going to be hearing from the man who is going to save America, Donald J. Trump. Before Mr. Trump takes the stage, I'm going to take just a moment to tell each and every one of you, as Mr. Trump's senior policy advisor, the real truth about Goldman Sachs' favorite senator, Ted Cruz. Now, Ted Cruz doesn't want to talk about the issues in this race. In fact, Ted Cruz is so eager to avoid talking about the issues in this race, the issues affecting your lives, Ted Cruz himself is bringing up hit pieces on him. Ted Cruz brought up the Inquirer story and then blamed us for that. Ted Cruz is probably going to bring up the D.C. Madam story and blame us for that too because he doesn't want to talk about the issues affecting your life. I was working in the Senate in 2013 and we had an epic fight over immigration affecting the lives of every person in this room. Ted Cruz put forward an amendment to double Muslim immigration into the United States. No screening, no security measures, nothing to prevent ISIS from infiltrating this country because Ted Cruz is an extremist. Ted Cruz introduced an amendment to increase by 500 percent the number of foreign workers coming into this country. That is an extreme and radical agenda. Do you want to support someone like Ted Cruz who puts foreign workers ahead of American workers? Or do you want someone like Donald J. Trump who believes in jobs and wages for American workers first? <laughs> On another issue that affects the lives of you and every single person in this state, Ted Cruz sided with Goldman Sachs and the globalists over the working people who are the heart and soul of this country, and that's the issue of trade. In 2015, Barack Obama came to the U.S. Senate and he said, I need you to help me pass my trade bill, my TPP. And you know what Ted Cruz said? He said, yes, sir, whatever you want. Do you want to support a man like Ted Cruz who sides with Obama over you on trade? Or do you want to keep manufacturing jobs inside the United States? Yeah. Wisconsin has lost 20% of its manufacturing jobs since 2000. It has been heartbreaking. Factories have shut down. More factories are shutting down now, just like Oscar Mayer. Working people who built this country are being deprived of their jobs, their incomes, their wages, their ability to support their children. And the people in Washington, D.C., who lecture Mr. Trump about his tone, don't care when your factory shuts down. They don't care when your wages go down. They don't care when your children don't have a bright economic future, as long as they're making money. We push an amendment to crack down on Chinese currency cheating. Ted Cruz opposed that amendment. Can you side with somebody who supports China over America? No! Or do you support Donald J. Trump, who puts America first? Yes! Ted Cruz is a radical Wall Street globalist who will rip the beating heart out of manufacturing inside the United States of America. We cannot let that happen. Will you support Donald Trump and save manufacturing in Wisconsin? Yeah. Do you remember in Chicago when the protesters attacked the cops? And do you remember after that when Senator Ted Cruz, instead of standing with law enforcement, sided with the protesters? Can you support someone who sides with protesters over cops? Or will you support a candidate like Donald J. Trump who supports the men and women in blue? One final thing. I talked a moment ago about tone. Now, Donald Trump is running a campaign about love of country, about love of neighbor, about love of family, about our love for each other, and our desire to have our children have the best future. The special interests in D.C. who complain and weep their crocodile tears over Donald Trump's tone because he's tough on illegal immigration, because he's tough on crime, because he's tough on corrupt, corruption. Have these special interests in D.C., have these political bosses, 
Did they weep any tears when your factory closed? Did they weep any tears when Kate Steinle died? Did they weep any tears when your wages didn't rise in 20 years? Because they don't care about you. All they care about themselves. This election is a referendum on 40 years of failed leadership that has betrayed the working people of this country. They have contempt for you. They have contempt for your families. They tell you your concerns aren't legitimate. You're wrong for wanting a secure border. You're wrong for wanting rising wages. You're wrong for wanting keeping factories. This is your chance. This is your once-in-a-lifetime chance on Tuesday to take back control of your country. Will you do it? Yeah. And will you send Ted Cruz back to Washington, D.C. and tell him you will never be president of the United States? Yeah. Ted Cruz is a radical Wall Street globalist who will destroy Wisconsin and Donald Trump will save this country and he will save Wisconsin. So I'm appealing to all of you. Will you get out and vote on Tuesday? Yeah. Will you vote for your country? Yeah. Will you vote for your family? Will you vote for your jobs? Yes. Will you vote for a secure border? Yes. Will you vote to keep out the terrorists? Yes. This is your once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. This is your chance. This is your moment. One more time. Will you on Tuesday stand strong and vote for Donald J. Trump? Yes. Thank you and God bless. have a very, very big victory. Very, very big. You know, I've been up here a lot, and I love it. And the people I love, I have many friends from Wisconsin, but they told me this was going to happen. They said, now, Donald, you're going to win Wisconsin, but you have to come here. I said, what do you mean come here? I've been there many times, but he said, no, no, be here. So I've been here so much, you're starting to get sick of me, I hope, right? Huh? I hope. But we've done a lot of rallies, and they've been amazing. You know, we've had, we've had thousands and thousands of people that, unfortunately, we couldn't get in. We can't get the arenas big enough. We're doing uh, two more today and some television and some other things, and we're all over the place. And I'll tell you, the feeling that we have here is incredible. So I just want to thank you all. It's, it's about... Making America great again, folks. It's not about me. I'm a messenger. I'm really sort of your messenger. But it's about making America great again. Everybody's talking about it. It's a movement going on. That's why the vote tomorrow is so important. You know, your governor, who, and Steve went through, I don't have to go through the numbers. The numbers are not what people think. The numbers aren't great. You understand that, what's happening here. And in all fairness to him, What's happening in the United States? The numbers are terrible because we're losing our manufacturing, we're losing our businesses, we're losing our money. We have deficits that are so massive, and we have had for years. In a certain way, it reminds me of a friend of mine. He's a very strong guy. He's been sick for a long time, for a long, long time. He was supposed to have died two years ago, a long time ago. And he hangs on and hangs on and hangs on. He's an amazing guy, just tough. And I said, wow. And I call him and I say, you doing okay? I am, I am. And, you know, he was so badly hurt. 
and he was just, just a strong guy. This country, we lose money all the time. For years and years, we've had deficits. For years and years, we've had bad trade deals. For years and years, we've defended the world at tremendous cost to ourselves. For years and years, like NATO, I get criticized for NATO. I'm the one that understands it. Now experts are saying, you know, Trump really sort of has something we never thought of. They're so, the people that study NATO, they're so close to it, they don't understand that it's obsolete. And I'm not saying you get rid of it, I'm sa and I never did. But I say people have to pay up. If they're going to be in, you have 28 countries. And why should we be paying a vast majority of the cost of NATO? People have to pay up. The countries have to pay up. So I was being interviewed, and I was talking about NATO. And I said, number one, it's obsolete. This was put in, in terms of Soviet Union, when the Soviet Union, which isn't here anymore. Now, Russia's tough and all of that, and that's fine. But we need somebody to look after terrorism. You know, there are new threats now that they didn't have 68 years ago, a different kind of threat. Different countries involved. It's different from the 28 countries that you have right now. Some of them have overlap, but some are much different in terms of terrorism. Because today, we have a radical Islamic terrorism threat, a term that our president doesn't even want to mention. I mean, here's a guy who makes a deal with Iran, who, by the way, he's just clueless, folks. He's clueless. <laughs> he makes a deal. It's so sad. He makes a deal with Iran, and now he's very upset because obviously they're breaking the deal. And he's, yeah, yesterday he came out and he talked about the deal with Iran. He's disappointed. And he said it weakly, but it was strong, strong enough to know that things aren't working out with the deal. The ink isn't even dry. And I said, one of the papers asked me, one of the media groups asked me about it. I said, I could have told you about this a year ago. I mean, it's... It's like we're a bunch of babies. We're being led by people that don't know what they're doing. It's like they're babies. It's like taking candy from a baby. The rest of us views us just like that. Boom, taking candy from a baby. Whether it's their military deals with us, whether it's the trade deals. So I said about NATO, and I mean this wholeheartedly. Um, I've been, look, I built a great company. I've been making a lot of money over my life. I've made a, I built a phenomenal company, very low debt, tremendous assets, some of the great assets in the world, great cash flow. And I say that not to brag. I say that because that's the kind of thinking we have to have in our country now, or we're going down. We're going down. I was interviewed by Bob Woodward and Bob Costa of the Washington Post, and two great reporters. And they did a story, and it was, I thought it was a pretty good story. It was pretty accurate. Uh, I don't know where they had it on this, but somebody came out that I said, we are going, we're in a bubble, big bubble. Could be a really ugly bubble. You know what that is, right? Bubbles. Bubbles aren't pretty. We've had bubbles. And when they burst, it's not a good thing. And... What I said is we're going to go into a massive recession. But I also say, if I'm president, that's not going to happen. Because I'm going to straighten things out before it happens. It's going to be a mess. And, you know, you cannot continue to lose the kind of billions and billions of dollars on every single thing we do. With China, we have a $500 billion trade deficit. With Mexico... By the way, they're killing us at the border. We will build the wall. They will pay for the wall. Okay. 100%. 100%. 100%. But with Mexico, you know, as an example, uh, we have $58 billion trade deficit. That doesn't include all the drugs that's pouring across our border, poisoning our youth, and poisoning not only our youth, our people. When I won New Hampshire, the people of New Hampshire, every time I went to see them, they talked about heroin as their biggest problem. They didn't talk about the military. They didn't talk about this. They did mention the vets a lot. We're going to straighten out the situation for the vets because the vets all over our country, all over our country, the vets are suffering. And frankly, we take care of illegal immigrants better than we take care of our vets. And it's going to change. It's going to change. But I said, we're in unless I become president, because we'll do things that will be good. Number one, I'm going to renegotiate trade deals, and they're going to be fair. And we'll make deals, and I have the greatest negotiators in the world. Carl Icahn endorsed me. We have so many unbelievable endorsements. 
We have the greatest in the world, greatest negotiators in the world, greatest business people. We don't use them. We use political hacks to make these massive trade deals with foreign countries. And we don't want to use political hacks anymore. It's, it's over. We've got to use our best. We have to use our finest, and we don't do that. So that's going to start happening. But with NATO. So NATO, we are paying a tremendous amount of money for NATO. And it's not fair, folks. It's not fair. And I would get together, and I'll say to the countries that haven't paid and that are paying not their fair share, and they know they're getting away with murder, but why should they do it? Nobody calls, nobody talks to them and says, you know, we're defending you and you're not paying. I want them to pay up, and I want them to pay delinquent, because delinquent, for years they haven't been paying. This isn't like it just stopped. For many years they haven't been paying. I want them to pay delinquent. And you know what? If they want to leave NATO, that's okay with me. And frankly, if it affects NATO to the point where we're not going to have NATO, we'll come up with something else. Don't worry about it. But we, we just have to do it. You always have to be able... In deal-making, you always have to be able to walk. You have to be able to walk. So I took a lot of criticism. They said, here was the headline. Donald Trump wants to dissolve NATO. That's not what I said. And I said, and this is the Washington Post, this is others. I said, Donald Trump wants to have people pay. Donald Trump wants to adjust for terrorism, which we have to do. Donald Trump wants to do all of the things that I explained. Donald Trump wants to get all of the back money that's owed to us by all of these countries who have had a free ride or close to a free ride. And Donald Trump wants to make the United States rich again and great again and wants to help other nations. I want to help other nations. But we don't want to be the fools. We don't want to be the dumb patsies that we are all over the world because that's what's happening. I mean, you have guys that are running that are totally taken care of by special interests. You take a look at the people supporting Ted Cruz. Totally you take a look at the people that are giving to his PACs and that are giving him money. These people are, they have total control over him. They will say, jump, Ted. In some cases, they'll say, jump, Lion Ted, because nobody, nobody lies like this guy. This guy's a liar. He's a liar. We call him Lion Ted. You know? You notice I win the evangelical vote. He's always walking in with the Bible held high, puts it down, then he lies. <laughs> Remember what he did to Ben Carson, a phenomenal guy who endorsed me in Iowa. He said, the election's over. Ben Carson has left. He's left. It's over for Ben Carson. He's left vote. For me, this was on election day. This wasn't the day before. This wasn't the day after. This was as people are going in, they're screaming that Ben Carson had left. And he said he didn't know about it. He knew about it. He knew about it. Then they had a voter fraud. You know, the voter, you saw that, the voter thing, where, the whole thing. Look, this is a dirty business, this politics. I've never seen lying like this. I've never seen deception like this. The media is very dishonest because they don't give out the true story. They don't give out. They give out. No, they don't. They're dishonest as hell. They're so dishonest. They don't give out the true story. I'm sorry. They're we very, very dishonest people. And sometimes they are maybe for, you know, they give sound bites. Like when I talk about NATO and I talk about the economics of NATO. I'm sorry. We have to talk about it. But we can't be the patsy for 27 other countries. We can't do that. We just can't. And they don't mention that. They just say Donald Trump wants to destroy NATO. And you always have to be able to walk. So let me give you another example. They said, Donald Trump wants to arm with nuclear Asia. Of course, I don't want to do that. My biggest, and in my opinion, the biggest problem, you know, President Obama said the single greatest problem that the world
pass in my desk. You know, they send me listings, right? Like some people get houses, I get military bases. We get, it's crazy. My life is crazy. But I say, how many military bases are for sale? We're selling all these military bases. Why? What are we doing? And you know, you see Russia is expanding its military all over. They're building, they're building all sorts of areas all along the borders of different parts of Russia. They're, they're expanding. You look at what China is doing in the South China Sea. And they say, oh, Trump doesn't have experts. Let me tell you, I do have experts, but I know what's happening. China is not. And look at the experts we've had. Okay? Look at the experts. All these people have had experts. You know, I've always wanted to say this. I've never said this before. With all the talking we all do, all of these experts, oh, we need an expert. The experts are terrible. Look at the mess we're in with all these experts that we have. Look at the mess. Look at, look at the Middle East. If our presidents and our politicians went on vacation for 365 days a year, if they went to the beach, we'd be in much better shape right now in the Middle East. Right? We'd be in much, much, we'd be in much better shape. I mean, these people don't know what they're doing. They say, Donald Trump needs a foreign policy advisor. Supposing I didn't have one. And I have a lot of people. I met last week with a lot of people, all good people. But supposing I didn't have one, would it be worse than what we're doing now? The people, the experts, and I'm not knocking them. I'm just saying the world is a mess. We've helped make it a mess. We've totally destabilized the Middle East. Had we not gone into Iraq, and then the way we got out of Iraq with Obama was a disaster. Because once we were in, we could have maybe kept some people. But what's really the thing I would have kept? The oil. We left. And now ISIS has the oil, and Iran is taking over Iraq. So for years and years and decades and decades, Iran has wanted to take over Iraq, and they couldn't do it. They'd fight and fight and fight. And they were equal powers, and one would win, and another one would win. They'd go 10 feet left, 10 feet left, then they'd rest. Boom, boom. This would go on for decades, right? We knocked the hell out of Iraq, and now Iran's taking it over. They're reporting to Iran. And Iran's going to get one of the great, you know, you think the deal they made was good? Which Obama now says they've violated? They violated the deal before they even signed it. They're buying missiles from Russia. I heard they're buying missiles from Russia. Like two or three days after they signed the deal, they go out and they buy 118 Airbus planes, right? You know, the big jetliners made in Airbus, made in Europe. They don't buy Boeing. Then somebody said, well, they're not allowed to buy Boeing because they're not allowed to buy in this country. I said, really? So we give them 150 billion, but we restrict them. So why, when you made the deal, didn't we take that restriction off? That's a restriction we could have taken off. Because one of these geniuses that work in the media, they said, well, Donald Trump didn't know that they're not allowed to spend here. And you know what? That's the case. And you know, you then make it part of the deal. You take it off. We want them to spend their money with Boeing. We don't want them buying Airbus. We want them buying Boeing. It's America first. America first. So, so, Ted Cruz, I mean, first of all, we got two guys running. I started with 17. We're now down to two. And I always joke, and I have fun with it, because I can be the most presidential person you've ever seen. I'm like a really smart person. I did really well. I have very good genes in terms of all of that stuff. Believe me, I'm so much smarter than these guys that write the stories about Trump. Trump didn't do this or he didn't do that. In the meantime, I'm there. I'm here. I get a kick out of these candidates that I've defeated. Donald Trump maybe will not beat Hillary Clinton. By the way, I'll beat her so easily. I haven't even focused on it. I haven't even started on Hillary. The only time I did was two months ago. She said something nasty. I said it back, and her poll numbers went like this in one day. And she had a tough time that evening with Bill, believe me. I will tell you. So I haven't even thought about Hillary. But, you know, I get a kick out of these guys that I've defeated. Donald Trump will not beat so-and-so. I say, but I beat you. And I beat Walker really badly. 
Don't forget, when Walker came in, oh, I wish I had it. I'm going to show it today at one of the rallies. We have rallies. In fact, my wife is flying in for these rallies. We have a, rally, a big one in the afternoon. And Melania is coming in. It's going to be great. So let me just tell you, we're going to have a lot of fun. I'm going to show the plaque. I should have brought it for you. This group. Oh, well. All right. You'll see it on television, okay? It's the same thing. But I got a plaque from Walker saying this and that. Okay. Here's the story. Here's the story. When I was in South Carolina, I was running, and I was running against a lot of guys, the face of the Republican Party, the future of the Republican Party, all of these different guys big in the Republican Party. I wasn't expected to win. Uh, this was Cruz's battle ground area, they said. This was going to be great for Cruz, but Rubio was tough. Then all of a sudden, Nikki Haley, the governor from South Carolina, who's very weak on borders, very, very weak on illegal immigration, unbelievably weak on it, she supported Rubio. It was over. I was going to get killed. The governor of the state who's fairly popular, but they didn't know that not as popular as people. In fact, the lieutenant governor supported me, and I said, I'd rather have the lieutenant governor than the governor. But the governor supported Marco, and I said, that's bad. And guess what happened? I won in a landslide. Same thing's going to happen here. I think the same thing. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. You have a governor that's got a lot of false information out there. You saw the numbers. I don't have to read you the numbers. I can tell you job creation is low. You're an average state in terms of the states around you. All of that stuff. Plus, there's a lot of turmoil here. Wouldn't it be nice? You know, we're all fighters, especially the people in this room. My people are fighters. I love my people. In fact, one of the pollsters came on today. They talked about Trump has like this 35% base. And I thought it was great. I love these people. They said there's nothing, nothing, and it has to be something. But they said there's nothing he can do to lose those people. And I said, wow, that's a big statement. Should we try it? <laughs> no. But they said there's nothing he can do to lose that base. Now, they said he has to expand his base, and we're expanding plenty. But they said there's nothing he can do. We had a poll come out uh, the other day. I think it was NBC came out 42%. That's with three or four people in the race. We had one come out 53%. But, but they, they, my people are incredible. They then interviewed a woman. And, you know, the reporters are always negative. They always put negative. Well, you know, Donald Trump said this, or Donald... Would you still want to be with Donald Trump? She said, there is absolutely nothing he can do and nothing anybody else can tell me where I will cast my vote for anybody but Donald Trump. This was this beautiful woman. Oh! I wanted to grab that television set and hug it. I want to find out this woman, but... And she said, and all my friends feel the same way. And it was, it's amazing. It's amazing. So we have a powerful group. We have a wonderful, wonderful group of people. Who's out there shouting? I love that. Uh, thank you. I love you. I love you too. Believe me. So we have this great, we have this great group of people. And I think we're just going to have a phenomenal time. Look, what am I talking about? I'm talking about simple. We're talking about, we're, uh, get him, get him out. Here we have our standard, you know, stand up and shout for a couple of seconds. All right, get them out, please. I wonder what state he came from. You know, they send him around. The last person Hillary wants to run against is Donald Trump, believe me, folks. And they send him around. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, fine. It actually sort of makes it more interesting, though, doesn't it? Otherwise, we could get a little bit bored. We get a little bit, you know, so this is good. Everyone, you'll probably have one or two. Uh, yesterday, we had a rally. It was so good, right? It was so good. And you've been hearing what's happened. Yesterday, we had one rally where we turned down, I feel terribly, uh, please, I hope those people that left 
still vote for me, okay? But yesterday we had our va- a rally where we turned out five to 6,000 people. They couldn't get them in. We had about 3,000 people inside. We had another one where we had 4,000 people in the room and we had five or 6,000 people in another room. And the person that ran that facility said they've been there for a long time. They've never seen anything like it, right? Am I right? You were there, right? What are you, following me around? There's a group that's following me. Ah, I love you. I'll never disappoint you. Let me tell you, I'm never going to disappoint you first. So look, you know, a couple of things. And the reason I'm not going to disappoint you, because I'm self-funding, I'm putting up my own money. I'm not controlled by these groups. I'm not controlled by the banks. I'm not controlled by electric. I'm not controlled by lumber. I'm not controlled by the pharmaceuticals. I'm controlled by the people. I'm controlled by... All of the people, that's all. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I won't get there. Maybe I will. I will tell you, it's a movement. The cover of Time magazine so many times, over a short period of time, they call it a movement. And they even said, one of the writers said to me recently, said a long time, also recently, top, top guy. Actually, a very liberal, but still a talented guy. We can say that, right? He said, no, no, it makes no difference if you win or lose. What you've done is amazing. I said, makes a big difference. If I lose, what I've done to me was a total waste of time. I really mean it. Total waste of time. If I win, we can make the change. If you lose, like Romney had a great chance to win. He should have won. He choked like a dog. This guy choked. And I don't want his support. I'm never going to go back. You know, it's when, I, when you're rough with somebody... Like I said yesterday to one of the people, well, Ted Cruz is having a hard time saying he's going to endorse you. I said, let me make it easy. I don't need his endorsement. When it's all over, when it's all over, win, lose, or draw, Ted doesn't have to endorse me. I think we're going to get there. I think we're going to get there on the 1237, if you want to know the truth. I think we're going to have the delegate. But, But who knows? Who knows? Look, you have a governor who's against me. He's only against me because I was very, very tough with him. That's all. I mean, he gave me plaques. I told you. You'll see the plaque today. Unfortunately, it'll be on television, but that's okay. But, but I was tough on him. And I was tough on Jeb. And I was tough on Marco. We won Florida by 20 points. 20 points. But I turned on the television and I see ads. One after another after another. Here. I've been here for three days, and then I was here for four days. Before that, every once in a while I go back. And New York, by the way, I love New York. New York just came out with a poll. It's like I'm killing everybody, which is good. Isn't it nice when the people that know you best have you way up, okay? Without any influence or anything. New York, New Jersey, Governor Christie endorsed us, big league. New York, New Jersey, and, and Connecticut is phenomenal. And also, very importantly, very, very importantly, you look at Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I went to school at the Wharton School. Pennsylvania, big, big up. So we're doing great in Pennsylvania, like a tremendous, tremendous number there. So I think we're going to do great. But if we do well here, folks, it's over. If, if we don't... If we, don't, if we don't win here, it's not over. But wouldn't you like to take the credit in Wisconsin for ending it? Give Wisconsin the credit for ending it. And then we can focus on Hillary instead of these two guys. So look, so I don't know what's going to happen. I hear we're doing very well. I hear the polls right now are very, very close. And my friend was right, come here, and I've enjoyed it. I've met, made new friends, a lot of new friends. But I, I'll tell you what, I turned on the television last night, and every ad was negative to Trump. They're untruthful ads, by the way. And eh, most of them are. Not all of them. A couple of them, couple of them are getting pretty close. But, <laughs> but they're all negative ads. And they're spending millions of dollars on negative ads, all right? They're spending millions. They have the governor against me. They have a couple of other people that I never even heard of against me. I don't know who the hell they are. They never met me. I never met them. I don't particularly want to meet them. But they have the governors against me. And I remember with Nikki Haley when she came out and and it was over. And then I won in a landslide, South Carolina. It was over. And I have a feeling the same thing's going to happen here. Because Walker has not done a great job. He has not done a good job. 
He's, and by the way, he's been okay. He's, you're average. I hate to say it. You look around your surrounding states. You know what you are? Average. You're not average people, right? So big deal. You got the governor. And the only reason he's doing it, he hates Cruz. They all hate Cruz. Everybody hates Cruz. Lion Ted Cruz. There's a guy, he's in the United States Senate. And until a week ago, he didn't have any senator endorse him. And the senator that he respects the most in the world is called Senator Jeff Sessions. And Senator Sessions endorsed me. Okay? He'd go around and tell stories, Senator Jeff Sessions, Senator Jeff Sessions on the border. He's an incredible guy, highly respected by everybody. And Senator Jeff Sessions, who I don't think ever endorsed a presidential candidate, I'm pretty sure, he endorsed Donald Trump, which was a shocker to Cruz and a shocker to the dishonest people back there. <laughs> except, except for John Roberts, he's fine. John is very honest. Right, John? So, so look, here's the story. Because again, the media got it wrong. I said Kasich should get out. Now, normally I wouldn't say that. Normally I wouldn't say it. But Kasich, here's the story. We've gone through many, many states. I've won, I think, 22 states. Cruz gets up, he says, uh, I'm the only one. You know, with this, oh, I wish you could just talk normally every once in a while. <laughs> you ever hear this? I'm the only one that has proven that I can beat Donald Trump. Remember in the debate? I beat him five times. And I looked over, I said, yeah, but I've beaten you 22 times. You remember that? Remember? And he stuck like this. He didn't say anything. You know, he's a debater, but he can't talk. So he's not a debater either. According to every poll, I beat him in the debate. But here's the story with Cruz. Cruz is not going to do it. But Kasich, he's one for 30. In other words, think of it. He's lost like 29 or 30 or 31 times, whatever the hell it is. Every single state and every single island, he's lost. He's lost everything. He's lost everything. And I would have beat him, except instead of going to Ohio for one more day, I didn't want to take a chance. You know, a phony poll came out, because these guys give you phony polls. I was up in Florida. I was up in Florida by a tremendous amount, like 20 points. And I said, oh, great, I'm going to Ohio. And then a phony poll came out from one of the phony people back there. You know, they call them, they call, I won't go tell you what they call those polls. They call them dirty polls. They're dirty polls because they're phony. And it said, headline, Donald Trump rapidly losing his lead in Florida. He's rapidly losing his lead. He's down to only six points. He was up 18 or 19. He's down from 18 to six. It looks, this is like three days before the election in Florida. I said, oh man, I can't leave Florida. I've got to stay here. I've got to make sure I won. And I had a rally that night, which was unbelievable in Boca Raton. And I had other rallies and it was great. And then I won in a landslide. And if I would have gone to Ohio, instead of listening to the dirty Paul, I would have won in Ohio. It was so close, I was going to win. And I was all set. But I didn't want to take a chance with Florida. But here's the story with Kasich. Let's say he's won, and that's his own state, where he has a machine behind him, etc., etc. So he's 1 and 30. He ought to get the hell out, honestly. And you know what? That doesn't mean he has to quit. Because he can go to the convention and put his name and say, I want to run for president. Because in all fairness to Jeb Bush and to Marco Rubio and to Rand Paul and to every single candidate that went out and worked hard, that frankly, in most cases, have done much better than Kasich. They could have stayed. You know, he's just like a stubborn guy. He's stubborn. He doesn't want to leave. They asked him the other day, are you going to leave? No, not going to leave. And let me tell you, he hurts me much more than he hurts Cruz. Cruz wants him out. Cruz is wrong. He hurts me. In fact, a recent poll came out where I get many more of his votes than Cruz gets. So Marco should have stayed in, and the other ones should have stayed in, because they're doing better, and they were doing better than Kasich. So he's just staying there. He's not even campaigning here. He's gone. He's right now in other states campaigning because he feels he's not going to do well in Wisconsin. And, and he's right. 
I don't think he's going to do well anywhere. So if he wants to run, let him go to the convention. Let him put, he's the governor, you know, governor, and we're talking about Cleveland. Let him put his name in contention, and if things don't work out, let him be. But it's very, very unfair just to have a stubborn guy like that to be campaigning. And I'll tell you, but it's really unfair to other candidates who did much better than he ever did. He could never do as well as they did, and they dropped out when they realized they couldn't win. And now soon, Cruz is going to be in that position. He's not going to be able to win because he doesn't have enough, he doesn't have enough delegates. Now remember this, remember this. I have millions more votes than Cruz, and I got all these cameras going, so if I'm wrong, it's going to be a headline. Donald Trump exaggerated. I don't exaggerate. I have very little exaggeration, you know. I've learned, like Trump, the art of the deal. I used to say it's the greatest selling business book of all time. I think it is. But just to solve the problem, I say one of the greatest business books of all time, right? Selling. Uh, you got to be very careful. But I don't have to be careful about this. I've got millions and millions more votes than Chris. Millions. By, uh, like, a lot. I've got almost 300 delegates. That's a lot. More than Cruz. And, and we won't even talk about Kasich because he's not even in the same ballpark. But I have many, many more delegates than Cruz. I have millions more votes than both of them. Millions. What's happening in the Republican Party in terms of people coming into the Republican Party is the biggest political story in the world right now. And everybody's talking about it. Now, I very rarely get good press, but the people are smart. They get what's going on. And one of the reasons I don't get good press is non-establishment. I used to be the ultimate establishment. I gave lots of money, millions of dollars to politicians, right? I mean, recently, before I got in, $350,000 to the Republican Governors Association. It's like taking money, throwing it out the window, but that's okay. But I was like establishment. Once I decided, once I decided to run, once I took this, made this big decision, which is hard, not an easy thing to do. It takes guts, believe me, folks, it takes guts. Once I decided to run, and my wife told me, she said, you know, darling, if you run, you're going to win. But you actually have to run. Not that she wanted me to, because she didn't. But she said, if you run, you're going to win. But she knows how people respond to me. But she said, you're going to have to actually stand up and do it. You can't just be polled, because nobody's going to believe you're going to run. They can do a poll and they say, Donald Trump is absolutely running. And nobody believes it. She said the only one. And she turned out to be right. Because almost from the beginning, I've been number one. Now, I've been tough because I hate to see our country taken advantage of. So I've been tough. I've been tough on China. I, I have great relationships in China. They all know I'm right. They know I'm right. They tell me I'm right. But I've been tough on China. I've been tough on many countries. I've been very tough on Mexico because Mexico is just killing us. Look at, all the look at all the companies that are moving to Mexico, folks. Carrier, Ford, I mean, uh, Nabisco. I could give you a list that would be from up to that ceiling. They're moving to Mexico. They're stopping their taxes in this country. They're firing thousands and thousands and actually millions of people like like Wisconsin. Take a look at what's happened to your manufacturing. You look at a chart. I got to show you the chart. I have to show you. Wait a minute. I got to show you. Look at this stuff. Look at this Look at this. We don't have to go fancy. There we go. Look at this. Show us the truth. Look at that chart. How are we doing? Good? Yeah. Let me show you another view. This is the U.S. staff. This is the United States. Okay. Let me show you this. Let me show you this, folks. United States manufacturing jobs rapidly declined since 2000. Can you see that chart? Look at that. Look at that. You know where those jobs are going? They're going to everywhere but us. Everywhere but us. Look at those numbers, folks. We don't need fancy charts, do we? Look at those numbers. Look at those numbers. United States manufacturing, right? 
And this chart's a good one compared to some. I got charts that I could show you your head would spin. In fact, I'm actually having some very, very professionally done charts. And they are going to be yeah. devastating. I don't, I don't even like doing it. They're so negative. So what's happening is the following. I'm running. I'm doing well. I'm fighting a hostile press, really hostile. I'm fighting, I'm fighting negative ads. There was something I saw the other day, I think on Fox or one of them, talking about the money that's been spent against me. And they had the number of ads that were spent against me. 55,000 ads. But I saw it last night in my hotel room. Nice hotel. All I want is clean. I just want clean. It doesn't have to be fancy. And it's not. But it's clean. That's what we want. I expect that out of Wisconsin clean, right? <laughs> but I have the television on. And it's ad after ad. And I'll tell you one of them. Club for Growth. I see Club for Growth. They came to my office. They asked me for $1 million. I said, no, thank you. I never even heard of them. Then they write me a letter, which I posted, by the way. They asked me for a million dollars in the letter. I said, no. Now I see Club for Growth doing negative ads about me. These are dishonest people. That's like a form of extortion. Now, it would have been cheaper, probably, and easier if I just gave them the million bucks. But I'd rather give the million to you. I'd rather give it to anybody. Give it to charity. You know, you can be rich, but you can't be stupid. You can't be stupid. So this Club for Growth, they're doing so many negative ads. And yet they came to my office asking me, begging me for money. And now they go and use my name to get other people to put up money because they have their own problems. I will do such a good job for you. Now, here's the story. So Kasich shouldn't be in. He, he adds nothing. And one other thing. He voted for NAFTA, which is a disaster. And he's totally in favor of the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Kasich is gone. And it's, by the way, his state also, highly overrated. He's in the lower half of his surrounding states. That's the best way to look at it, I think, right? But he's not doing well. You look at his coal areas. You look at his steel areas. They're dying in Ohio. I'll change it around. China is dumping steel in the United States at numbers that are so ridiculous, and it's killing our jobs. Killing. And they're dumping to do that. To do that. And once they have it, then you watch what's going to happen. Okay? You watch. I know exactly what they're doing. I know exactly what they're doing. So, Cruz. Cruz has a lot of problems. All right? Cruz has a lot of problems. And we call him Lion Ted, but there's for a good reason. Because Cruz, if you look at him, look at his personal financial disclosure. He's always talking about, I'll protect you from the banks, you know, like he's Robin Hood. He didn't disclose that he's got a loan from Citibank and from Goldman Sachs for a million dollars at a very, very low interest rate. He didn't want to disclose that because that would look good when he's paying less than anybody could possibly pay. Okay? He didn't disclose many things, but here's the problem. He doesn't know anything about business. He has no clue. He doesn't get along with anybody. Everybody hates him. The United States Senate hates him. You know, it's wonderful to say you're an outsider, but now he's saying he's establishment. Have you seen the new? He's now the establishment. He is saying he's the establishment. He's got all these guys like Lindsey Graham. There's another guy. Oh, did I kill the poor guy? I hit him so hard. He's still recovering. He goes, he hates Cruz. He hates him. And he has a news conference to announce. Why, does he, why doesn't he just go back? You know, in South Carolina, I was at 42 and he was at 2. And he's the sitting senator from South Carolina. But Lindsey Graham, this poor guy, this poor, poor, pathetic man, he says, to, he says, and I don't want to support. Lindsey, you don't ever have to support me, I promise, okay? You know, somebody would say, you'll never get his support. I don't want his support. I don't care. I beat him so badly that it's really impossible for him to support me, okay? It's impossible. I hit him so hard from the phone number, remember, when he came? He came up wanting money. He came up to my one, and I just found this old phone number. I said, I wonder if it still works. His phone exploded the next day. We did that at a, a, you know, what do I know? Hey, we all had fun. You know, it's just fun. But Lindsey Graham hates Ted Cruz. He said such bad things about him, like you could never, ever come back. And then they said he's endorsed. They said, what do you think? Well, 
I had no choice. Well, he did have a choice. He didn't have to endorse. Do you remember when Marco ran and he wasn't supposed to run because Marco was with Bush and, you know, Bush was like a mentor? Well, remember, because I love to be honest. Number one, it's more fun. Number two, in a way, it's easier. And I get myself in trouble, but I like to be honest. I think it's great. And what we need is less political correctness. We have to get the job done, folks. But do you remember... Do you remember when I said that Jeb Bush and Marco Rubio can't stand each other, right? They hate each other. And they said, no, no. And here's what I hate about political speak. It was obvious they couldn't stand each other. Don't worry about the phone. Don't worry. It was obvious somebody's phone's going off. It was obvious that they couldn't stand each other. They hated each other. You could see. And Jeb would, that asked Jeb, and Jeb also supported. They, they have to support, because sometimes I hit too hard. A great athlete said, sometimes you hit too hard. And I said, you're right, but I have to do it. I have to win. And we have to win. The country has to win, by the way. Most importantly, the country has to win. But do you remember where Jeb, and they said, what do you think of Marco? He is my dear, dear friend, and Donald Trump is not a conservative. I'm so conservative. I'm not a conservative on stupid trade. You know, free trade is great. But stupid trade is no good. Okay, and we have stupid trade because we lose with everybody. We're losing. We're getting the money sucked out. I told you about my friend who's hanging on because he's got great genes. He's hanging on. This country is hanging on. It's amazing that with all of these losses for so many years that we still have a country. It's amazing. This country, I make the analogy because our country is hanging on. Our real job number is over 20 percent. It's not 5 percent. And the jobs we have, even the other side says the jobs are bad jobs. Okay. But then they ask Marco, what do you think of Jeb? He goes, he is my dear, dear friend. And then he goes, about me. He goes, he's a man of great talent. I said, hmm, that's strange. Why would he say that, right? He was a man. And I'm saying to myself, I wonder why. And I said, you don't understand. At the debate, remember, uh, Jeb was saying, well, Marco's my dear friend. And Marco would say, Jeb's. And I said, they hate each other. It turned out they hated each other. You know, it's one of those things. Ultimately, I'm right about things. <laughs> Ultimately, I'm right. I, I wanted to say I'm always right. I would have said it, except there's so much press. You know, they'll say, oh, well, maybe. <laughs> but I'm pretty right about things. I've been right about government. In my book in 2000, I talked about Osama bin Laden. That was two years before the World Trade Center came down. People said, I don't believe it. But you need somebody that's not going to be controlled by the special interests. You need somebody. You need somebody that, because I will tell you what, the lobbyists, these are the greatest. These people are brilliant people. They've raised millions, tens of millions of dollars for different candidates. And there's always a lobbyist for a different senator, congressman. And they have like emblazoned on their forehead, Cruz, Cruz. Hillary's got many of them, Hillary. But you go to these people, you need something, you own a big company, or you're having a problem with a country because you're not able to rip off the United States enough with a trade deal. You go see these lobbyists, almost guaranteed they produce. With me, won't happen, folks. With me, pharmaceuticals. You know, there's a bad bidding process on pharmaceuticals. There's a bad bidding process for everything. We have such unbelievable potential in our country. We can make our country so good and so strong, and it's going to take place pretty quickly. We're going to negotiate new trade deals with the smartest traders and the best dealers and the best business people in the world. We're going to do something like you've never seen before. We're going to make America great again. We're going to make America strong again. You're going to be so proud of your country. We're going to start winning again. We are like, we're like the big bully that gets constantly beat up. You watch the bully get beat up. That's us. We're beat up by everybody. Russia toys with us. China toys with us. Mexico laughs at us. They can't believe how stupid we are. It's all over, folks. Those days are over. You're going to be so proud of your country. You're going to be so thrilled and so proud of this country. You're going to say this is one of the great days that you came here. And you're going to say that tomorrow's vote, and I, I have to say, go out and vote. But you're going to say tomorrow's vote was the greatest vote you ever cast because you're going to be proud of your country again. Okay?
So, so I just want to thank everybody. You are really special people. Your vote is going to be very important tomorrow because the world is watching Wisconsin. The world is watching. They're seeing if this momentum from this incredible movement is going to be slowed down. And again, I think in two weeks we're going to be huge victories all over the place. But I'd like it to really, the end would be here. The end will be here. If, if you win, and you know what, it may not happen because we have the machine against us. We have these dopey guys, this one guy, such a dope. I, I talked to him, a radio guy, some guy named Sykes. What a dope. The guy doesn't have a, no, he doesn't have a clue. But, and so, such a one side. I always thought if you had a radio program, you're supposed to be sort of like a little bit impartial. But you are going to be so proud of what you do. This could be the real beginning. If it's not, I think we get there anyway, and I'm pretty sure we get there anyway. And somebody doing the numbers today said you absolutely get there. I want to get there with Wisconsin. This will send such a signal that... This, this will send such a signal that the people of our country are so sick and tired of incompetent representation, of incompetent leadership, of people that don't care for them, of people where we've been disenfranchised. I mean, we've literally been disenfranchised. And it will send a signal that we have to represent the middle class. We have to represent business. We have to get rid of rules and regulations that were put in for political reasons and that are destroying businesses, that are destroying farms, that are destroying energy, that are destroying the fabric of our country. We are going to make our country so strong and so great. And I hope every single one of you gets out tomorrow and bring your friends, bring everybody. And, you know, you can cross over. I think I'm going to have a big Democrat crossover, and I hope I do. I think I'm going to have a big, big... I think we're going to have a tremendous independent. We're going to have a big workers crossover. And we're going to have a big vote tomorrow by people that have never voted before. You wouldn't believe it. 30, 40, 50, 70, 80 years old. People come up to me, Mr. Trump, I've never voted before. This is the first time I'll ever vote. I'm so proud to be voting for you. And you know, they even talk about that. That's never happened. These are people that have never, sounds in a way bad, right? But they love the country. They've never found anybody they wanted to vote for. So get out tomorrow, vote, you watch. You will be so happy. Thank you very much. We're going to make America great again. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.